Amen. 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 And uh, for any who want to know more about the series from um, from uh, convocation, holy convocation, it's available, and we'll talk more about that. Amen. 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 And amen. To get us started, um, I'm going to call our attention. I am calling our attention. I'm not going to. I'm calling our attention to Psalm 20. Psalm 20. And uh, it's only nine verses long, so I'm going to ask that we just read those nine verses together. Uh, of course, we are particularly interested in verse 7, but we're going to read them all. Amen? Amen and amen. Let's thank God for being here. Thank God for everybody. Amen. At home, amen. We know you're there. And wherever you may be catching us today, we know you're there and we thank God for you being with us. Let us read Psalm 20. May we read. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary. And strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings. And accept thy burnt sacrifice. Grant thee according to thine own heart. And fulfill all counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now I know that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Amen. Verse 7 is where we're focusing. Amen. And we can read that together. Some trust in chariots. And some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. I'm seeking to mull down uh, an expansive kind of topic into a very simple presentation. Amen. Amen. So, uh, because that's what I'm led to do. Amen. If the Lord says, go back and protract it out, then I'll do that. But I'm doing what he says do today. From that passage, especially verse 7, we want to talk, we are talking from this subject today. Numbering, numbering, amen. In God's economy. Numbering in God's economy. Amen? Numbering or counting in God's economy. Amen. 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 Um, Lots of research has been done and is being done and I guess con will continue to be done on the matter of, of, of uh, how and when God counts things. 
things or how and when he numbers things. And what is it that he numbers? And why is it that he numbers? Amen? Amen. Well, in a word, in a word, God numbers friends and God numbers foes. That's two broad categories. He numbers friends and he numbers foes. He numbers those who are with him and he numbers those who are against him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, there were times when God had uh, households counted. Amen. There were times when God had livestock counted. Amen. Uh, um, uh, he um, started out um, in Genesis 32, and we're not going to turn there, but in Genesis 32, 12, he, taught, he gives this promise. To the, to the seed of Abraham. He said, your, your descendants are going to be as numerous as the sands of the seashore and as the stars of heaven. Amen. Your, your descendants are going to be as numerous as all those grains of sand. And all those stars, seen and unseen. In other words, you're going to have more descendants than you can count. Amen? Amen. Well, let's kind of um, chase that rabbit a little bit. Uh, why then, at subsequent times, did God have Israel counted? He had Israel counted to show them, I'm keeping my promise. I am multiplying you. I am increasing your numbers. You were there, and now you're here. There were fewer of you, and now there are more of you. So when he references his children, he references them just so they can have a, a point of reference to, to compare to where they started. Amen. Why do we weigh in when we start trying to lose weight? <laughs> as painful as it is. We need that. So when we jump on that scale later, we got a point of, we can go back and say, oh, wow. Or we can go back and say, oh, Lord. <laughs> but but we, need, we need that point of reference, right? Yeah, so God had to, 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 to occasionally count them so that they might be reminded, not so that he could be convinced, but so that Israel could be reminded, I told you I'm going to multiply you. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Are, are we communicating? Amen. That, that's why, uh, as we mentioned, I think, on Friday evening, that's why it's, it's hard to understand this exclusivism that some um, of Israel's people want to practice. Amen. Because they're actually saying we want to limit who belongs to us. And in the process, they are, are denying the reality of others who belong to that group. So God counts his own. Not so he can assess his strength. But he just counts his own so that they can know I am faithful to do what I said I would do. 
Amen. 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 Now, God also counts his foes. And if we belong to God, then God's enemies are our enemies. Now, whether you like that or not, that's how it is. And if you're friends with God's enemies, then God really doesn't know what to think of you. Amen. Amen. But he will, he has often had his enemy counted. And he's often referred to the number of enemies who were eliminated at one time or another. Amen. Amen. Y'all remember? Now, if you really want to read a book that's kind of full of um, blood, <laughs> read, the, read Chronicles. Amen. 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 And I ain't speaking badly of the book. It's a good book. But it does what it's supposed to do. Chronicles offers over 1,600,000 counts of death. God took them out. Now I'm telling you, God ain't no joke now. He took them, he took his enemies out. As a matter of fact, in the book of Deuteronomy, we find that he told Israel, when you go in, you're going to face seven enemies. And my instructions to you are, eliminate them. Don't make treaties with them. Don't play footsie with them. Don't try to make alliances with them because they are my enemies. How differently do we approach things? Amen. In 2 Kings, there are over 185,000 deaths. Amen. I figure we need a little information. In 2 Samuel, there are, there are over 150,000 deaths. God wiping out his enemies. In 1 Kings, there's over 127,000 deaths. Amen. In 1 Samuel, there are over 84,000 deaths. Esther, Job, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, over 75,000 deaths. The book of Numbers, over 38,000 deaths. The book of Judges, over 250,000 deaths. If we go into non-canonical material, the Apocrypha, and other books that weren't included in our canon, we'll find hundreds of thousands of other deaths accounted for there. Amen. God has a very definite, unapologetic approach to dealing with enemies. Now some question God and some say, how can this just and loving God be so cruel, be so mean? But God knows. The heart of mankind. The problem isn't that God is cruel. The problem is that mankind is wicked. Exceedingly wicked. God knows who he can trust and who he can't trust. And he says... If you're not with me, then you are against me. I'll be communicating. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, let me, let me, let me. Uh, um, there's an account uh, that's referenced in 2 Samuel um, 24 and 1. And I'll try to turn there really fast. Amen. 2 Samuel 24 and 1. Amen. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Amen. Um, and here in, in this passage, here, as soon as I separate these two little pages, and again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. That's Second Samuel. Now look at First Chronicles. 21 and I'm not going to read it all but I'll just start it out at verse 1 and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel now they look like two contradictory uh, verses but they are not contradictory what, what, uh, what, if you want the, the rubber meets the road account read Chronicles What's happening in, in the, 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 the account in 2 Samuel is it's saying, God said, y'all know one thing, y'all so hard-headed, I'm going to back off. So he wasn't saying, go count. He backed off and he permitted Satan to provoke David to count. You got to, when, when passages look contradictory you gotta look for the synthesis you gotta look for how am i supposed to understand what god is saying through these passages that appear to be at odds with one another they are not at odds with one another verse uh, uh, second samuel simply says god is over everything and even the devil can't do something unless the lord permits him to and first chronicle is saying the devil went. So the 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 the, 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 the sequence is this. God says, Y'all so contrary, I'ma back and take my hands off and permit the devil to step in and provoke you to do what I told you not to do. Now whew, why was David's counting an offense to God? We're in a day when it's so such a common practice, but it's a simple answer. It's only right to count what belongs to you. So I ain't got no business trying to count your money. I have no business counting anything about, that's yours. Are we communicating? And so the offense was that the, 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 the entree to the offense was that David had the nerve to count what didn't belong to him. told you not to count. I count y'all because I want y'all to see you've grown. And I count your enemies because your enemies are my enemies but you have no business counting yourself. Whew. Well, David went on and counted, amen, and, and, and to some this would seem so logical and so reasonable, because David, you remember when David wanted to make Israel like the other countries, the other kingdoms, and God said, I didn't call you out to be like them, I called you out to be different than them, but you hard-headed, 
You hard head. Y'all want a king that y'all, y'all should. I don't want you to have a king. But y'all are insisting, so I'm going to just step back. I'm going to let y'all work this on out so y'all can see how wrong this is. So they, Israel went on. David didn't lead that. Israel went on. Amen. And they, and they got Saul. Amen. Trying to be like everybody else. Problem among the saints, even today. Trying to be like who we are not. Trying to fit in and be seamless with the world. How in the devil is a saint supposed to be seamless with the world? How? David did a census. And David conscribed a certain number of military men from every tribe. Wrong answer, David. These are not your people. They are not your military men. When the Lord get ready for you to fight, he'll give you the instructions on who you need to get to fight the battle. He'll tell you who to talk to. He'll tell you what to say when you get to him. As a matter of fact, sometimes he's so good at it that he'll fix it so when you get to him, you ain't got to say much because they'll already know why you came to him. But God has to orchestrate that. So, the sin in David's counting was that his counting was a display of distrust. His counting said, I know God said he going to handle it, but I better have a backup plan. Lord have mercy. I know he said he going to provide. But I better do so. I better do something for myself. So David's sin was his display of distrust. Now, why over and over and over again in the Old Testament, especially and even in the New, why does God tell His people? How many enemies are coming against them? Lord have mercy. That's a good question, y'all. That's a good, why does God say there are 500,000 soldiers from so and so coming against y'all? Why does Why Does he say that so that they can muster up more manpower? Certainly not. Gideon started with... God said too many. They got to go. They, they concerned. They worry about home. Tell them go home. <laughs> Amen. Still too many. Take them to the brook. Let them drink some water. If they laugh like a dog, laughing and looking at the same time, bring them along. The rest of them, send home. Why did God say he broke the number down? He said, so that when, when you get the victory, you will be able to give credit to yourself or nobody else. You will know that God did this. God did.
counting in God's economy. He counts his own so he can show them their growth. <laughs> he counts his foes so that Israel may know uh, what they're facing. Amen. Amen. But then I got to get even more personal with this. Why does God count my enemies? <laughs> don't fool yourself. I don't care how much everybody act like they like you. If you name the name of Jesus, you have some enemies. If you set your mind to do what's right in the sight of God, you have some enemies. Are we communicating? So in the Holy Ghost, what God will do if you walk closely enough with him, God will pull the blinders off. And he'll let you see people for exactly who they are. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want to believe it. Sometimes we try to convince ourselves they can't really be that bad. I ain't never done nothing to them. Why should they be against me? But baby, if God shows you that somebody is your enemy, you better believe it. Glory to God. But he doesn't reveal that. For me and you to get worried, he does not reveal that. For me and you to get ulcers, he does not reveal that. speak to your spirit amen that one doesn't don't trust that one you, you need to learn how to keep your mouth shut when you're talking to that one you need to stop talking all your business when you get around that one maybe y'all grew up together maybe y'all went to school together amen but they are not your friend all we communicate y'all can there's some ways you can kind of tell whether people mean you good or not Check out how long the conversations are when you're talking about how God blesses you. And check out how long the conversations are when you talk about how the devil's stressing you. They'll listen to you talk about your stresses all day long because they are excited about your stresses. They are excited about your family problems. They are excited about your health concerns. They are excited about your financial troubles. But God, hallelujah, God will let me count my enemies. He'll let me count my enemies. He'll let me know all of them who smile in your face. They mean you no good. All of them who pat you on the back saying, hey, doc, they mean you no good. All of them who will say kind words to you, they mean you no good. What's the saint to do? What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to handle it? Especially when he shows us enemies who are close to us. How do we handle it when our enemies are our friends? How 
do we handle it with our enemies or in our household? How do we handle it when our enemies are in our blood family? How do we handle it? When we go to church with some of our enemies. How do we handle it? When we have professional connections. But spiritual disconnect. The advice is simple. David writes in Psalm 20. Hallelujah. He writes in Psalm 20. Amen. About. It's actually a prayer for victory in battle. Hallelujah. And obviously by this time, David had gotten some sense. Because after David disobeyed God, in that account in 1 Chronicles and 2 Samuel, amen, over 170,000 of Israel were eliminated. God said, I got to punish you and I got three ways to do it. You choose. I ain't going to just put it on you. you. You tell me which one you want. You will get punished. This trust brings punishment. This loyalty brings punishment. There's a cost for saying you're with God. But when the pressure comes, you are identified on the enemy side. There's punishment that accompanies disobedience. Over 170,000 died. Now imagine yourself the king. And the, 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 the least of the three options is losing 170,000. And because of your sin, your people got to die. Because of your sin, wives losing husbands, parents losing children, because of your sin. I feel like I ain't preaching it. Like it ain't hitting some ears the way it needs to. But sin always cost. It always cost. Let me tell y'all something. If there is a seamless piece of, of, of fabric and a tear comes in the fabric, there are skillful people who can mend the tear so that it is practically unnoticeable. But it ain't the mending that determines how strong the, 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 the fabric is. It's the pressure once you start using the fabric. I said that to say. Some of us have been mended. But there still was an original tear. And if the wrong kind of pressure comes. It'll bust you loose. Where you thought you were mended. Sin always. Here's David at a more mature point in life. Here's David uh, when he can reason more in the things of God. Here's David, the same one who messed up, the same one who was so egocentric, the same one who said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Even the same David, God allowed him to mature. What I'm saying is God will get you past your mess ups if you really correct yourself. 
don't think that we get so smart that we can just dig a little deeper under cover and keep on doing the same thing and somehow God ain't gonna know Psalm 139 says where can I go to get away from you if I go on the mountaintop you up there if I go in the valley you there if I go on the rivers you there if I dig down into Sheol even there Counting, numbering in God's economy. He, he makes me to know mine enemies. And just that can be painful. It's painful to acknowledge that we've used poor judgment in terms of those whom we gathered in, those whom we became vulnerable with, those whom we trusted with our innermost things. It's painful to believe that we trusted somebody whose purpose from the beginning was to take us out. It's painful. If you haven't experienced it, then God bless you. But I've been there. I've done that. Amen. I didn't do it. I, didn't, I can't say I did it. I've done it. Amen. I trusted some folk. I never should have trusted. Amen. I took as allies. Folk who were enemies on a mission before I met them. But thanks be unto God. I'm like David. I'm still here. Got some bumps and bruises and scars. But I'm still here. Yeah I'm real sensitive when it comes to trusting people now. But I'm still here. I ain't gonna hurry to put nobody close to my bosom. But I'm still here. Mm-mm. I like, I thank God for these words of David. David said, Some some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. Some learn who their enemies are and then they assess their strengths so they can know how to fight back. But David says, but we will remember. <laughs> the name of the Lord. Last thing I got to do is tell you, call your enemies out. If it's cancer, call it out. If it's diabetes, call it out. If it's mental illness, call it out. If it's a tax on your marriage, call it out. If your children acting crazy, call it out. Whatever it is. Something trying to destroy your family, call it out. Something trying to destroy your peace, call it out. And don't you trust them. Your abilities as a person. Don't you trust in your counseling abilities if you can counsel. Don't you trust in your abilities to hurry up and find scriptures that sound right. Amen. David said, we will remember the name of the Lord. So I'm telling you today, in God's economy, the way to deal with your enemies is to call on your God call on your Savior call on your keeper God you made me you know everything about me God you saved me through the blood of Jesus Holy Ghost you keep me through all my ups and downs now do what you gotta do I 
see my enemies. It's a lot of them and a few of us. But I call on your name. Move by your power. Move by your power. Wipe them out. Clean the slate. Bring yourself glory. Bring yourself honor. Glory to God. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we, I see, we will remember the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we communicating? Glory to God. Don't let the size of your enemies force. Don't let the number of troops coming against you bring desperation to you. Sometimes life is just like the old folk used to say. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Seem like you got enough to deal with right here. But then the enemy will bring something else on you. And it seems like those two are more than you can bear. But the enemy will bring something else on you. He's trying to overwhelm you. But I'm telling you, before you lose your composure, invoke, 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 the name of you. In God's economy, doesn't matter how numerous our enemies are. Doesn't matter how strong they are. Hallelujah. When we were children, we used to say, the bigger they come. In other words, the more come at you, the more God's power you're going to see. You hear what I'm saying? Even if it looks like you caught, had got taken your last breath, don't you look at your enemies. You say, Jesus, just get the word out, Jesus. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I love you. I'm looking to you, Lord. I don't care who's against me. Saints of God are facing many enemies including COVID-19 we thank God for giving people the wisdom to develop vaccines our ultimate covering comes in the name of the Lord so do what he provides to help yourself along. But don't be misguided into thinking once you get that shot, you got it, you can free sail on home free. You better still keep calling on the name of Jesus. You better now I I was instructed to ask us, and even those of you at home can join in and uh, say the camps that the enemy has con has developed against us. If it's sickness in our bodies, say that. If it's trouble in our minds, stress, distress, frustration, anxiety, that whole posse of emotional and mental uh, disorders they are called, then say that. Amen. If he's attacking your family, don't you get worried that somebody will know y'all ain't 
Ebony's poster child for the family of the year. The devil with what other people think. You want healing in your family. If you're unwilling to name those demons. If you are unwilling to see the counting God is providing. Then you'll never know how wonderful his deliverance is. And the word wonderful in God's economy means full of wonder. You'll never be able to understand how full of wonder his deliverance is if we aren't able to acknowledge how great those enemies are. Anybody willing to, even if you don't say it out loud, if you want to say it out loud, it, it won't make me tremble. But anybody willing to say, take a moment and say, um, you know, uh, kind of what it is that's, uh, the enemy is uh, coming against you with. Let me just start it out. I'll throw one out that's real for me. Peace. Cancer. Wayward children. We see your enemy. We see you. We see your manifestation. We see how you cropping yourself up. At home, call, call the enemies out. Let the devil know we see him just for who he is. And we recognize his agenda. We recognize his agenda. Are we communicating? This is, this is so serious. Any of the rest of y'all, amen, now is the time to shy up about this. Y'all need to be, any of y'all need to be saying something? Any of y'all? Discouragement, physical healing, physical illness. Physical, okay, family, relations. Family. Patience. Diabetes. We see you, devil. We see you. We see you. And we ain't calling you out because we think you so great. We calling you out just so you can know we recognize you. And when the Lord moves and when he heals and when he gets all of this under control. Hallelujah. Grandchildren. I'm telling you. We can come to church. Y'all need to be saying it at home too. You need to be saying it wherever you are on your job, wherever you're catching this. Call them out. If you don't acknowledge what's coming against you, you won't know how to celebrate when the Lord delivers you. Just physical challenges. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light and the darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. 
How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands And time is in his hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The Godhead three in one Father, Spirit and Son the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. He the name above all names and he's worthy of all praise my heart will sing how great is our God he's the name he's the name above all names and he's worthy of all praise my heart will sing how great is our god how great is our god sing with me how great is our god all will see how great how great is our god come on let's sing it how great sing at home is our god sing with me how great is our god all will see how great how great is our God you gotta see those things coming down in your life how great is our God cancer you need to hear this how great is our God diabetes you need to hear this how great how great family troubles everything we've named and everything else how great how great is our God sing with me how great is our God oh we'll see how great is our God hallelujah how great is our God sing with me how great is our God Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Sing it to your trouble. Sing it to your trouble. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God hallelujah he is the name above all names and he's worthy of all praise and our hearts will sing how great is our God he is the name above all others he's the name he's the name above all name and he's worthy of all praise and our hearts will sing how great 
is our God. Now, in order for this moment to work, you got to do more than just enjoy the song. Right now, that song needs to be your anthem. That song needs to be your war song. That song needs to be what tells you charge. That song needs to be the source of your peace. That song needs to be the rock that stabilizes your joy. You've got to be able to tell the devil, devil, I see your attack. And, and I cannot say that I haven't been a fool for you at some points, but devil, you need to know. No, 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 no. I, I see your numbers, but I see the might of my God. So I will not fear. I might not like it. I might not prefer it, but I will not fear. Because I understand how numbering works in God's economy. I understand how counting works in God's economy. Hallelujah. So I come expecting. I told you something had been kind of simmering all week long. This thing had been in my spirit all through the convocation. God kept saying, they're, they're, they're yet hurting, and some are fearful. And they need to see how I see things. They need to understand how I count things. I don't count it so they can be fearful. I count it so they can see how great I am. I've always done it that way. So I speak to situations here in the month of January. Maybe some of y'all are already saying, very soon this year, this is going to happen. You speak in negativity, you speak in defeat, you speak very soon this year, this is going to fall apart. It's just a matter of time. This ain't, no, no, uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. You got to look at that thing through the eyes of God and how he looks at your enemies in his economy. So I'll do the invitation in just a moment, but I want to do a prayer right now because we got people who are hurting and we need to set things aright. We need to set things aright. We don't need to be trying to pray for somebody else and we toe up from the floor up. Amen. We need to set things right. We need, to, we, need, we need to regain our composure so that we can stand in the gap for somebody else. Amen. Just a brief word of prayer. Just a brief word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we will remember your name we will remember your name and so we ask you right now forgive us for any time and every time we have forgotten your name forgive us for any time and every time we did not call on you we leaned to our own understanding we took battles into our own hands and invariably we made things worse we brought shame to your name but today, thank you for convening us so that you can bring healing to us, so that you can cause us to redirect our energies. Thank you for causing us to know that you don't let us see our enemies so that we can fear them. Rather, you let us see them so that we can, in, we can appreciate the magnitude of your power when you destroy them, when you move them out of the way. And God, the enemies we have named today, we believe right now that you're moving them out of the way. The enemies we see now, we, we believe right now, we will soon see them no more. 
Lord, we're standing on your word. We trust in the power of your name. We trust in the authority of your name today. In the name of Jesus. So everything we have named in this building, everything we've named over the airwaves at home and wherever your people may be, God, we know that you've heard it all. And we know right now that you're greater than all of those things individually and you're greater than all those things combined. They're all enemies of your people. They will not succeed. Hallelujah. 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 Show yourself strong, God. Show yourself strong. Where disease is, show yourself strong. Where mental issues are, show yourself strong. Where emotional stability isn't so stable, show yourself strong. Where money looking funny, show yourself strong. Where families look like they want to fall apart, show yourself strong, God. In the name of Jesus, we, be we believe it is accomplished as we speak it. And we affirm our trust in your name. Not horses, not chariots, not, not, not who we can call, not the power we think other people got who are our friends. But you, work it out for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God, we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. At the same time, I go right on extending the invitation that maybe somebody who needs to be saved today. Amen. I missed all this teaching and all this preaching or whatever. That may be somebody who's saying, well, I want to know this God. How can I know him? You can know him through Jesus Christ. Amen. You can know him because he loved you so much. And he loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in the son can have all that the father will give. Salvation. Life more abundantly. Now please, please know this. Don't, don't look to measure abundant life by things. Things are good. And many things are necessary for life. But you don't measure abundant life by good. I know people in palaces who are tormented. And people in shanties who have the peace of God. So the peace of God comes through knowing him. No matter where you live. Amen. No matter what, what we have. The peace of God reaches us wherever we are. So if you need to be saved, please make that decision today. You can call. You can also on our website, there's a way for you to access joining now and filling out membership forms. It's all there on the website um, so that you can do it either way. You can call and we can take information and pray with you and that sort of thing. You can do it on the website and we can retrieve your information and contact you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. If you're backslidden, and it sounds like such a negative word because the possibilities are negative. Amen. Uh, you can always come back home. I don't care who you are, you can come back home. You can come back home. Bad decisions, bad company, trying a foolish thing and getting hooked before you knew it, uh, flirting with a relationship that has become consuming and you know it's not right. Uh, I know you know you can hear God inside your heart calling you back. You can hear him calling your name. He wants you back. He'll forgive you. I don't care what the transgression is. He'll forgive you. As long as you have not called the Holy Ghost of no power and no effect, you can get, you can get forgiveness. Hallelujah. If you're uh, 
one of those saved people who doesn't belong anywhere because you put your all your energy into trying to critique every church rather than listening to God tell you where you need to find you a seat and sit down and maybe you need to just settle yourself uh, stop trying to assess things with your mind our minds are too puny to assess the will of God ask him to lead you where he wants you to go amen so that you can be taught what he wants you to know because there are some things you will not learn out of fellowship you will not you will not amen If you need the power of the Holy Ghost, the Lord wants you to have that power. And we believe that power comes with some initial evidence. That initial evidence need not be confused with the ongoing work of the Holy Ghost. Because he, he has many more things he will do. But we believe that there is that initial count, encounter will yield an initial response. And we have people who will pray with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, so we're going to do a brief prayer and I ask believers if you would just pray with me to kind of shore up those who need to make decisions amen heavenly father in the name of Jesus I come I'm the one who needs to be saved I've often spent my time pointing at the faults in others but this morning, it's me. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of salvation. I believe that you sent Jesus, your son, who gave his life. And I believe that through the giving of his life, and the shedding of his blood, the way was made for me to get back to you. So right now, I receive Jesus as my personal Savior, my Lord, my Master. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Teach me your ways. I want to learn so that I can be just who you want me to be. In Jesus' name. That's me. Heavenly Father, I'm the one who needs restoration. I've drifted. I've drifted. I've blamed others. I've blamed things. But the truth is, it's me. I got slowful. I got slack. I started slipping. I started flirting with wrong things. And before I knew it, I drifted from you. I acknowledge that I need restoration. And I can only get it through you receive me home again wash me of all my sins and iniquities thank you for receiving me in Jesus' name that's me Heavenly Father I'm the one who needs a church home I've been floating wondering slow to commit but I realize your word your word is true your word teaches us that we are to connect with you with your people wherever we are so forgive me of this failure although I've been talking with you and living for you every day in this matter, I have failed. Forgive me. Give me the strength to get where you want me to be. My promise is 
I'll make you a good soldier in that place. In Jesus' name, that's me. Heavenly Father, I'm the one who needs power, Holy Ghost power. I confess Jesus. I received him as my Savior. But I need the power of the Holy Ghost to guide me in all truth. Help me now. I receive as a gift from you the Holy Ghost himself. I thank you for filling, for indwelling, for keeping me by the power of the Holy Ghost. And this I will never let go in Jesus' name. That's me. Now, Lord, I pray for all your saints. I pray for strength for the elderly. Lord, I pray for strength for the infirmed. I pray for the countless people who are in hospitals and other institutions who cannot be visited right now. Lord, I pray for those uh, who only have the human company of their caregivers. Lord, in the name of Jesus, speak peace to their spirits, God. In the name of Jesus. Let's speak peace to the spirits of those family members who would be there if they could. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the weakest among us. I pray for the most vulnerable among us. I pray for the ones who have the most medical issues, and the most mental issues, and the most emotional issues. And Lord, the most those who are burdened the most, I lift them before you right now. Lord, and I pray that you move in their situations in mighty ways, God. I pray for those who are, whose loved ones are slipping away even right now. Give them your peace, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray for the caregivers in the name of Jesus who have to see so much death and so much sickness so much pain, so much agony. I pray their strength, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for the first responders, Lord, who have to go into situations that they're just not aware of what's going on in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for a settling, a settling in your sense in our nation, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for a settling with your sense in our local community. I pray for a settling with some God sense on our school board, on our county council, on our sheriff and his office. I pray for a settling with your sense in municipal legal uh, entities, God, uh, govern, uh, police entities, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for wisdom for all the teachers and the students the administrators, Lord, the bus drivers, all of them, God. The cafeteria workers, God. I just pray. And I pray that you will allow us to see the rainbow in the sky before very long, God. In the name of Jesus. In the meantime, God, we will be vigilant. We will be on point. Because you get honor out of your children doing the right thing. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing and answering this prayer. In Jesus' strong name, we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.